Good afternoon, everyone. You listen to WCEG Network, Veterans Today. We are your worldwide community group. Uh, I'm Herman Anderson. Uh, my co-host is Anthony Aiken, and we also have Gus, who is not available today. But you can, uh, as we go through the introduction, I'll tell you how you can watch us. Uh, who we are, then what uh, is available, then we will uh, introduce our guests and, and start the program. Uh, as I said earlier, this is WCEG Network. You can watch us live on your smart TV, YouTube, uh, Facebook. We're streaming live on Facebook. Uh, we are here to empower the worldwide community. Uh, the disclaimer, we will give you the disclaimer, the topic and the opinion of the show host and guests are not WCEG Network. They, and as we get ready to go forward again, the way that you can uh, join the conversation today is on Smart TV, YouTube, Facebook Live, or uh, you can go to our network, www.wcegtalkradio.com. Or you can go to www.wcegradio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and you can tune in to us on YouTube. As I said at the beginning of the program, I am Herman Anderson, one of the co-hosts. I'm a Air Force Vietnam veteran. My other uh, co-host available today is retired Colonel Anthony Aiken. How y'all doing out there today, Herman? And I tell you what, it's so so good to be back with you again uh, as we uh, get ready to celebrate uh, Veterans Day, which should be Veterans Day every day. Yeah. To be honest with you. But uh, it's so good to be back with you and uh, have our, our very exciting guests with us uh, this week. So uh, it's good to see everyone. And Herman, it's going to be a great show. You bet. It's going to be so great. Let's, let's do Wayne next. Then we'll do, we'll save the best for last. <laughs> I'm mute, Wayne. Okay, yes, I'm Wayne Jones. I'm a veteran, helping veterans, and I'm working in co uh, collaboration with Mrs. Avis uh, from Riverdale Town Center. Mr. Herman uh, is our chair for veterans, helping veterans. I'm a appreciative of being able to be on with you today. What we're doing in the uh, area of uh, veterans celebration, we have been doing a food drive. And with that food drive, it's been tremendous. Thanks for the uh, Riverdale Town Center opening up this venue to allow us to be a uh, point of impact for our community. So we're just grateful to be here and so pleasurable to uh, be able to support our community. Uh, also, we are doing a couple of other things and we'll maybe get into those as we go into the uh, call. Or you want me to do that as we speak, sir? Uh, we'll do it as we go through the program. Okay, thank you. And next, uh, I'm, uh, when you, normally first time you come on, we read your bio. So, uh, uh, Avis has the super bio. I'm going to read that, then okay. we'll move on from that. Okay. Avis Jackson is the owner and chief executive officer of AYJ Entertainment LLC. She is professionally, she is a professional special event leader with extensive body of knowledge required to manage, coordinate, direct, and detail of any private, social, large scale event. She is currently program and event coordinator for the city of Riverdale, Georgia, Riverdale, Georgia, Cultural Affairs Department, where she plans, organizes, designs events such as live concerts, city carnivals, festivals, wedding classes, recreation, athletic activity, uh, con uh, to meet contractual obligations and, qu and quality customer service needs for the community. She prepares and reviews event agendas, confirming that all services are necessary. Avis is a member of the department team they, that they have produced live concerts featuring international regional 
local talent. The Riverdale Amphitheater is the home of the South City Concert CV, Seafood, Barbecue Music Festival, Riverdale After Work, Cool Down. Avis has also served as the event service coordinator, combining sales, catering, service, hospitality, and events supported by time management, CAD layout for events, and lead support staff. Uh, I'm going to uh, read uh, the next paragraph. Avis designed and created the event week city initiative that is, delivered, that is developed to act as the mutual aid for the veteran community within the city and surrounding areas. The initial period, a week of support services for veteran all branches of the services, over 100 plus veterans have Avis part, partnered with organizations <laughs> Vet Fest, Vet Connect, ARP, as well as board of the Clayton County Senior Services Initiative Committee. And I'll read the closing line. Avis is active member of ILEA, International Live Entertainment Association, NABFEME, National Association of Black Female Executives. Avis Jackson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You all for having me this afternoon. That was a long bio. I was trying to say short, but um, I'm so honored to be here today. Um, I'm looking forward to just speaking with you guys and about Vet Week and some uh, other activities that my husband and I have been talking about um, just for us to work on on a personal level. But um, we our um, sponsors and our partners have grown so much over the years that it's um, it's just been a blessing, and, um, and I, I hope that the veterans have uh, appreciated the effort that we've put forth to try and um, bring these um, mutual aid programs and services to the community. Great. So, so let's start with what we are doing now, at present, that we dealing with the, the poster behind you. Uh, right. We started already, so let's just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> we have, um on on Monday it was our opening ceremony we always every year we have a virtual soiree last year um we were um grateful and honored that Mr. Tom um I forget his I think it's Jones I could be wrong um recorded the soiree last year and um he um actually has that on YouTube so I will share that that link hopefully in the chat um, so that you guys can kind of see what it is that we actually do opening up. Um, it's more of a celebration um, type of event. And then on yesterday, the Veterans Helping Veterans came out to the town center, produce drive through. It went very, very well. It, it was smooth. It wasn't, um, there were, we didn't have issues with traffic or anything. Um, and uh, the everyone that came through was just you know, excited and 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 appreciative for just being there and being able to service the community. Um, on today, we have our legal team um, of, of partners, which is Abora and Fields Law Firm, and they are um, the two lawyers who talk to you about helping you with any benefits or legal issues that any veterans may have. Um, again, I'll try and put that information in the chat so that you guys will have their contact information. Also today, um, a, another partner, which I'm so honored, um, I live in Clayton County. So um, when anytime Clayton County partners with me to do anything or ask me to do anything, I am there. Um, my tax dollars, you know, help support the things that are going on. So I'm there and Clayton County Senior Services um, offered today to do, um, to feed the veterans. So today you can go to um, either um, of the senior centers, I think is uh, Griswell or I forget the other one, I'm so sorry. I don't have it in front of me, but um, any of the Clayton County Senior Service Centers and um, between 11 a.m. and one, which they're probably getting ready to wrap up. Um, and they have, um also a homebound service where they were delivering meals to those veterans who could not you know get out or would like you know to have some type of companionship 
The rest of the week, or the rest of the uh, activities is um, mostly in veterans. That's my biggest thing I'm looking forward to. That's kind of moving beyond um, having just vet week. But um, on Tuesday, the 10th, the veterans, Pep and veterans will be back again and bringing us some produce boxes in. Let me tell you, I love working with veterans having veterans <laughs> because they are a machine. One thing I can tell, I can say about the veterans community, and I get this a lot, not just from my director and my city management, but my coworkers as well. They're like, what do you need us to do? What, what can we do? And, and it's like, you know, they are, that machine is already going. So we as veterans, like I tell them at work, you know, you have to understand we have a mindset. We find out what the mission is, and then it's it's about execution at that point. You know, I, I can't explain it or or what the camaraderie is or how that feels, but you have to be a member of the family to understand that that's just how we work. It doesn't matter how, you know, how young or old, it's, it's the same mentality. So um, um, to wrap up that week, I'm going to be doing interview of a veteran, and I have several um, I have about 10 now, but I'm understanding and I'm learning that that's going to take me through the rest of the year now and probably beyond, but I look forward to it. It's a a part of the Veterans Helping Veterans, no, I'm sorry, Veterans History Project with the Library of Congress. Yes. What I do is um, just interview the veterans. They have a, a script that I send out to the veterans and we... Um, I, I really, I'm learning now, I probably need to have a conversation before we go straight into re, uh, recording so that um, the veterans are comfortable with the questions and I'm not gonna ask anything outside of what is on the paperwork because they wanna make sure that we stay um, very clear with the questions. But- um, uh, Let me ask you, uh, is, that, uh, is that what Dr. Uh, Candidate take? Of Emory, no, is that with Atlanta? Is it with Atlanta? Uh, no, see, I, I just went online and um was looking into other programs or services that I could bring into the vet week um package, I guess. And I ran across that, but I would love to know who that is so that I can get a little bit more understanding because I love to do that. I'm well, that's like well, extensive. I'll, I'll give you her information because that there are two parts to this. Emory is involved in and the Atlanta History Society is also involved in doing the same thing you were doing. Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, I'd love to find out more about that. Yes. <laughs> it's called Asala. Asala, and they're located down on Auburn Avenue. Okay. African American uh, History Museum. And Dr. Tate has been on our show a couple of times. She's actually interviewed me. I think she may have interviewed you too, right, Herman? Yes, she has. Uh, so, and, and correctly, you you two need to merge and not reinvent the wheel because exactly. she's been doing this now for about three years. And right. uh, she has interviewed a number of veterans in their homes and at other locations. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely something that's connected with the, the Library of Congress. And there's a, a set way to do it. So. Um, Sean Jones um, is the new president of the Asala chapter here in Atlanta, and he works with uh, Dr. Tate. So uh, she would be an excellent source for you to meet with uh, to discuss, because basically what you're talking about is already out there being done. That's and that's and I knew it was, but I that was my first time hearing about it and even being involved in. So I would love to be introduced. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. We'll take, we'll get there. Uh, Mr. Gary. Uh, Will Grace, Will Grace. Uh, how are you, how are you today? Uh, how are you doing, Mr. Herman? Give us doing a little great. bit of update on, uh, I know we were partying together and doing a lot of things. So just give us a little update. Okay, uh, the update for the vet week, starting with the VFW on behalf of Commander Prentice Baker, we are having a veteran shoe drive this Saturday, starting at 10 o'clock, and be located at the BFW 6449 in Fairburn. 
And the address is 6000 Rivertown Road. And also we'll be sponsoring Operation Gratitude, handing out, uh, preparing 300 bags of first responders during this pandemic. And with the triple nickel on behalf of Farrell Martin, uh, we are partnering up with Feeding Georgia families. I believe starting this month, the USDA will be giving 100 boxes or more food to Feeding Georgia families. Only requirement is, are uh, we looking for an organization that can handle that amount of food boxes? If they, can, if they want more, they can get more. And this will be beginning next Monday all the way up to the end of December. So you know any organization out there or university, anybody in the community who need some boxes of food, uh, they need to get, get in contact with Miss Allie Rivera. And also let's keep Miss Allie Rivera in prayer because she just lost her, her granddad uh, 48 hours ago. Mm. That is our report for those organizations. Okay. 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 It's good to hear that. Um, as I stated uh, on our last uh, uh, veteran show, I'm a member of the Commission on uh, Veteran Affairs for the City of Atlanta. And something that we could probably do with the City of Riverdale mm -hmm. is that we could post information on the city's website in regards to your events. Uh, most cities have quite a few veterans and the veterans have a network of their own. So uh, I know it may be too late now for the event coming up already in place, but any future event that uh, veterans, helping veterans may have, or the city of Riverdale may have, or the Triple Nickel or any of the organizations can have, you can provide that information to us and we'll send it out to the uh, public relations department for the various cities and they can put that on their, on their website. There are more than 700,000 veterans in the state of Georgia, and there are probably 200 plus thousand veterans in the state of Atlanta. I'm sure the gentleman in Washington, D.C. is feeling the pain of that right now <laughs> because veterans have voted to get them out of there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'm just being real. You know? I'm just being real on it. So, uh, as, as we call, you know, we should be celebrated every day. This, I, I, I applaud you at this veteran week, but Herman, he knows my passion. Mm -hmm. And there's something that we should do each and every day because freedom is not free. Yes, I agree. We have all paid a price. Yes. I remember meeting the Triple Nickel in Vincenza, Italy. The first time I met the Triple Nickel was in 1979 in Vincenza, Italy. I met several former triple nickels, and that's where they used to be headquartered at one time, you know, during the, the Second World War. So it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to get the information out on veterans, you know, Herman's organization, my organization, visually impaired veterans, the triple nickel, the VFW, the whole nine yards. So I'm just saying that I applaud you. I, we really appreciate what you're doing. We just don't do enough. Have on. We don't do enough. That's how I feel now. It's like I've done the vet week, I think, for the past three, three years now, I believe. And um, it's like, now what do I do? I want to do more. So um, as I was telling um Herman earlier, um my husband and I have decided to um and we haven't even put this out. This is this is like you guys are getting this fresh off the press, but we are doing <laughs> We'll be doing a, a, a Veterans 365. It's just, you know, every day he has to, um, you know, it, it the, the world hasn't changed for him. He's still a veteran. My husband is a U.S. Army veteran. He's um, a Sergeant First Class Willie James Jackson. Um, he was, um, he retired from Hunter Air Force Base in Savannah. And we were here, um, about four, four or five years before he retired, he, he was at a station in Savannah and we were here in Ellenwood. But just moving here and um, the decision to move here was um, to be near Fort Gillum and uh, McPherson, of course. And um, But when they shut the bases down, it was like, okay, I don't know if I'm ready to just, you know, not be in the military community. 
But then I began to meet, you know, organizations like Veterans Helping Veterans and um, Mr. Um, Leonard Morgan with VetFest and um, um, AARP with Jill Scott, like all, I mean, I'm sorry, Jill Hines, all of these different organizations were doing a lot of work in the community and it just, it, it was home for me. So he and I are deciding to, to, to come up with some things that he and I can do together. And uh, I'll still continue to do Vet Week if they'll allow me to. <laughs> and um, my uh, budget for Vet Week has always been about $1,500. But for me to come up with a whole week of activities, they could not believe it. And I told them, this is the family that I am in. This is, you know, these are my sisters, my brothers, and my whole family. And if they have something going on, it's just a matter of picking up the phone and asking them to bring it. And every time I picked up the phone, they have come out and supported. And I'm so proud and I'm so honored. And I just say, thank you. I don't think we can say thank you enough for you guys, but thank you. We are totally well, uh, appreciate you. Uh, uh, what uh, Anthony and myself has been doing this for five years. And we started uh, the organization Veteran Helping Veteran, which was originally Black Veteran Helping Veteran. Yes. We are eight years old. And what and we have the other organization like the Triple Nickel and the VFW that are 100 years old. So uh, what what I've learned in dealing with this, it's one important factor is communication for, among the organization. And another one is uh, that I've learned also from talking to, uh, uh, let's, just let's say talking to, politicians, local, state, and federal, is they listen to veterans, but the problem is we don't tell them what we want them to do. Mm -hmm. They want you to use our skills, which we got, which we were trained for in the military, to be precise, direct, and, and not just throw something out. You give them pretty much their market, marching orders, and they'll do it. So in order to be more productive into, uh, it's kind of a, and to make veterans as a whole more, more uh, aggressive and more, get more attention for, our, for veterans is, we kind of need to modify our, our profile because when we were, when you're in the military, you're dissimilar, and you also put him a talk to be non-political. Yeah. So those are issues that that uh, that I that's my goal is to address those in a professional, sensible way. Well, I, I totally agree with that position. I know what while we're in the military, we have to we can't be Republican, we can't be independent, we can't be uh, a Democrat. We work at the uh, the will of the commander in chief. And, and I, I, I can understand that. However, now that we're out, we, we need to be that barking dog to, to, to let folks know that we're viable. You know, I, I still keep in mind, and I'm sure all of you agree, that just taking a look at this past election, there were over 160 million people that voted. Now take a look at that. Less than 1% are in the military. We support and protect the masses. 1% in the military across the board. Yet, we're still having issues with compensations, issues with disabilities, issues with benefits, issues about being viable, and respect it. So we need to be vocal because they're not gonna be vocal for us. The majority of the people in Washington, DC that make the decisions for us have never had a rucksack on. Yeah. Don't know what it is to jump out of an airplane. Don't know what it is to have an MRE. Don't know what it is to be marched a 10 mile or 12 mile forts march. They don't have a clue what that is, but yet, they get full benefits when they retire after four, no, when they leave position after four years. Four years, they get full benefits. 
yet we get 50% and 2.5% for each year afterwards. So we need the VFWs, we need the, D, the, the DF, DAV, we need the Purple Heart, we need these service organizations to be our voice, but we need to step up and be a voice in our communities. Don't be ashamed to step out. Herman, knows, Herman knows okay. it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, I know. I know, don't, Anthony. <laughs> don't, don't so let's, let's uh, move to Wayne. Uh, Wayne, give us some, uh, like I say, we got a lot going on the rest of the year. So, And we are partnering with uh, everybody on here. So uh, just fill us in. Yes, sir. I'll start first with actually giving combinations again to Mrs. Jackson, Riverdale Town Center. It's been a tremendous, uh, and triple nickel <clears throat> because of our relationship in DFW. We, we really have a strong, I believe, a strong collaboration and coalition going right now. And speaking of coalition, I want to point back to uh, what uh, Mr. Anthony was talking about, about that synergy, if you would, because you know, just a few of us don't make much of an impact, but all of us collectively, we are a huge footprint. And so we can really make a dent in our society. And that's what we are doing. So we have uh, next Tuesday, beginning at um, 10 o'clock, 10, 10 a.m. until uh, supplies are exhausted, we'll be over at the Riverdale Town Center distributing food, uh, produce boxes. And I'm, I'm encouraging you, we had uh, a situation where we were working with the Triple Nickel and VFW at 400 Northside Drive uh, last month, and it just poured over into what we're doing right now. And which, uh, again, I'm so pleased I can't give enough accommodations for the groups that were participating in that and participating with us. Also, we're going to have um, at the uh, Riverdale Town Center see uh, COVID-19 testing. So please come out, flu. Uh, and flu um, shots and information from Morehouse School of Medicine. We're going to have also the Sheriff Department from Clayton County, who's going to be there to represent and also to show some love to people who are in need of jobs So and, and provide additional information. So we definitely uh, don't want to underscore some of the others that's going to be there. Ms. Davis might pick up on those later, but I definitely want to encourage everybody in the community, share the word, um, like I said, November the 10th, 10 a.m., please come out and support. And then as I come off, I want to make sure I mention, because <clears throat> it was mentioned by the commander from, uh, vice commander from the VFW about the food giveaway with Ms. Ali. We just need people to plug in either by way of providing an hour or some hours, monies, whatever you can give to help that organization continue to give us, the community, the resources we need to resource our community. Thank you. Very good, very good. Let me ask you, Ms. Uh, Ma'am, uh, what are some of the other activities you have scheduled for the week? I know you said you had something yesterday, but what other kind of activities uh, we need to hear about? Um, uh, as I said before, um, other than the Clayton County programs today, the rest of the week, we're closed on Wednesday, Veterans Day. We're all, um, the, the entire city is shut down. So I always, um, our activities always start either the Friday before, um, Veterans Day and then all the days after that, a week, you know, as, as the week go along, we try to plug in. Uh, programs and services for for the veterans. Um, as of our physical activity would be the the veterans helping veterans with the um, produce drive through. Um, but after that, we that's the end of our vet week. But I, as I stated before, I'm really looking forward to kind of hopefully putting something before my city management as to 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 bring the initiative as a you know 360 five day thing like veterans they're not going to just go away after veterans day we don't want the american flags put out on monday and taken up on thursday you know i, I like there are there are a lot of things that i'm passionate about um we had a um, conversation on uh the first of november i did uh vet women that that's another initiative that i'm going to be starting on my own um but I, I had a chance to talk with some um um Master Sergeant retired 
uh, Sparkle Adams. Um, I had a brigade commander officer there, like all these ladies with, you know, with the brass and everything. I was just geeked. I'm going to just tell you all, I was so excited because they were, you know, doing a lot of things that in my heart, I, you know, I, I said, if I ever get a chance to to do things like that, you know, and, um, oh, and I forgot to mention uh, Clayton County Veterans Court Services um, is also part of our legal service program. And, um, Lakeisha Dixon is the coordinator um, that I connect with in order to provide those services and the information to the veterans. We had about 10 veterans sign up for those services um, for the legal service. So it is working. I am reaching, you know, someone. So um, as far as the week to answer your question, we're we're just about at the end of it on Tuesday. When um, but after that, I'll be doing the uh interviewing the you know, interviewing a veteran. That okay. will be a continuation of celebrating. Uh, one, are you, the displays, uh, what about those? I'm, you mentioned I was just thinking that when Wayne was speaking. Uh, we, we also have a display in the city hall um, atrium in the lobby. Uh, Miss Cherokee, who is a uh, veterans, helping veterans liaison, came and she brought some fantastic displays and um, it's going to be there the rest of the week. Actually, I like to ask, sometimes I'll ask city, city management if we can keep it up the rest of the month so that the community can get a little bit more informed about, you know, the history of veterans. It's not just you know, walking around saying, thank you for your service. It goes beyond that. We need to allow the veterans to be able to say you're welcome because they didn't just raise their hand and, you know, offer their life to save ours. It, you know, it, 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 it goes beyond that. There were a lot of things that were accomplished. So um, with that being said, I, in the town center itself, um, since February Black History Month, we've been showcasing um, a um, the work of a photographer. His name is Johnny Crawford. Um, and you can go to johnnycrawfordphotography.com if you'd like to uh, get more information about him. But mm -hmm. he is um, the a photographer that did a portrait of Vietnam. So all of the veterans that he took portraits of, um, they're on our walls. It's a great, great display. Um, it's a great exhibit. I'd like to get him on. Actually, I'm going to be interviewing him um, and I'll share that um, on our social media, but I wanted to get more about his um, background and what, you know, what kind of, because he's not a veteran, which I thought he was, but he's not a veteran, but he said he was just passionate about the the history and the story and he wanted to get that out and it's, he's not just stopping at Vietnam he's going to go with um you know with as many um uh wars as possible I'm assuming but um other than that I'm like just I'll, I'll share that information as I get it with you Mr. Herman and then if you can just share it out you know to the community you, you know one thing that I, I was thinking about <clears throat> the next year maybe since it's your week is just about done. We have two gentlemen on representing, uh, you know, two separate organizations. One, the VFW, and you know, you have the DAV, Purple Heart. It may be a good idea that you have one day set aside where these veteran service organizations can come out and set up a static display, and then they can have their individuals who can help veterans through the process of understanding how to navigate the the compensation benefits made with the VA. Absolutely. With, them being, with them being a third party advocate outside of the VA, mm -hmm. these organizations are the main points that a veteran and their family needs to utilize to get what they've earned. That's the benefits and compensation. So you have several, DVA, Vets mm -hmm. and Foreign Wars, Purple Hearts, all of them, find out within each organization who is their benefits coordinator or you know for the VA and have them come out and, and give out information to speak to veterans. And, and another key thing is a lot of veterans would find it out don't have a copy of the DD form 214. Mm -hmm. So have a static table set aside whereby that individual can help them navigate how to get their DD form 214 through the 
Georgia Department of Veteran Affairs, or through another channel that you know we'll talk about later on in the show. But these are things that other things that you build and you can build on to make sure that this full week is beneficial to all veterans coming out. Absolutely. And I totally agree on um, last year, we were able to um, the actually the our entire facility, every room in our facility had an organization in it and were there to to at least give information, provide information or assist with services, just as you you've mentioned. Um, as I stated, COVID-19, you know, has a, has me a little handcuffed this, this year because I was ready to do all of that. But um, and uh, according to the CDC guidelines and um, our regulations from the city from city management, we had to um, cancel all of our activities that were on the city's um, calendar for this year, but they did let me do vet week and they did not let me um, have me cancel the um, the produce drive. That's the only physical activity that we were able to do this year. And I'm grateful for that. I'm again, thanks to the uh, veterans to helping veterans. They, they came out, they brought it and we still, we're moving. We're moving. And, and uh, we're going to make it happen on Tuesday. <laughs> I, like I, like I love your energy. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> if I could, Mr. Herman and uh, Mr. Anthony, if I can make an interjection with that, what Ms. Avis was just saying, I just want to say that the display, I, I it would not give credit and kudos, proper kudos, to the many museums that Mrs. Um, Lanera Gaston, Cherokee, walking, like lightly walking, uh, walk, walk, lightly talking, or whatever an Indian name is. I wanted to give it a little credit for that too. But, uh, so I won't miss it up. I just say though that to direct everybody over to the um, uh, oh. city hall, it is awesome. I'm telling you, uh, the words that I'm sharing doesn't give credit to what's there. Without the experience, it's like going into a mini or micro museum. The efforts and the energy she's put in it to make sure that we get the credit. And like Mrs. Ava says, this young lady, she's not an energy, uh, um, but she has a heart for veterans. And because of that heart, she's definitely put in a lot of energy for us. So if you're coming to the uh, Riverdale Town Center to see the display, ha, just echo what Ms. Uh, Avis said, please make sure you bring your mask, make sure you're COVID-19 uh, ready. They will let you in, but you gotta be COVID ready, okay? But it's awesome what she's done. And some of our, our very own, Triple Nickel, some of the others that are here now are displayed on there and you'll get a chance to see them in the active form. So I just wanted to put that out there. And last but not least, sir, um, on behalf of you, uh, Mr. Anthony, and you, Mr. Herman, I just wanted to say this. I know we're not ending this show, but I wanted to really put a plug in for you all because I was on a couple of weeks ago on the other show and the information that was mentioned uh, about the uh, blind, <clears throat> um, I, I found that to be very, very helpful. And I'm just gonna say to us as a collective, uh, veteran community. We have so many veterans that are hurting. My, Mr. Herman and myself, we've talked about this, that are hurting and unfortunately because of the things that we've gone through as for soldiers, service members, sometimes we have that uh, do it and die, okay? Attitude, suffer through it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, suck it up, attitude. Some of us don't make our pains known. And so we have people that's going to be available. And we uh, I make a number available on the uh, site, so you can call me. We're going to have a virtual um, meeting. It's for our group. But if you call us, I believe we can plug you in. We're going to have a psychologist that's going to be on our Zoom call. And some of you may find the information helpful. Back to you all. Thank you all. Well, you know, that, that comment is good because <laughs> we're knuckleheads. <laughs> right, you know, you know that you said suck it up. I can recall sucking it up many times, but sometimes I, I couldn't suck it up. I needed to go and get myself checked out, and I'm glad I did because when I retired, when I went into the military, I had one sheet, one sheet in my medical file, one sheet stamped good to go. But when I retired, it was as thick as my hand. 
And if I had not taken care of myself over those years, I wouldn't be able to take care of my family. And you see, we have to think about our families mm -hmm. as much as we think about ourselves. My mm -hmm. wife used to wear this shirt. Whenever he was needed, he was TDY. I was always going. <laughs> I was always going, but that was part of the job. Yes. And, and, and that's what I did. And just like you did. So we need to be advocates and let veterans know it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it took me two years to accept my, my visual impairment, walking in the walls, falling downstairs, walking in the glass glasses. But that was that knucklehead part of me saying, I can do this. <laughs> I can do this. But the, you know, the last time I walked into this big old glass and I couldn't see for three days, it's time for me to go to the hospital. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's time for me to get this checked out. So that's how visually impaired veterans of America was formed. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, my thing is, just like Herman's, we need to be advocate of information and to uplift each other. We must uplift each other. Well, that's that you know we talk about this all the time and we we give out as much information as we can and as he mentioned uh, uh for an example about the two dd214 we found that out uh like when someone comes in and they want to uh initially start for their benefit disability benefits uh compensation and a lot of time to start the process you need uh, a copy of your DD-214 and, and usually if uh, uh, a lot of us when we got out we have we got the original copy and we put it in a drawer somewhere <laughs> so we don't we don't we really don't know where it is so the the best thing to do is to encourage uh, veterans to uh, to to prepare in order to prepare to get in the system you need an id and you need the uh dd24 dd214 and i mean there are georgia department of veteran services is the best place to start each state has a department of veteran services uh that seemed to be the best way to start and if that doesn't work uh the va is available and then the, there's the va archives which is a lot of time is where you have to go if and I, I have that number i have to pull it out before we finish and but that's uh i mean over the years i've i've in advocating for veterans and helping veterans with their benefits and entitlement is basically you you have to start with your records getting your records all the documentation you need uh, to to file a claim, and uh, and that's that's an issue. I mean, there's a lot of veterans that got claims that's five years old, and uh, because they got stuck in the system, and so those are things that we 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 help that we need to help veterans with, and also uh, like in today's environment, there are. There are veterans uh, that are in financial trouble, in health trouble, in all types of uh, issues that we that where they need help, and and as different organizations it, and as advocates, uh, you know, it's it helps to have a group of organizations that are. Uh, and combine and share information to help help veterans because uh, one organization doesn't have all of the use a different organization kind of specialize in different things so it we can put it all together and and help more veterans yeah and uh mr uh vice chair mr gary uh i know we are dealing with uh the rest of the year dealing with the food distribution and other projects uh you you have any additional information you would like to any you know yes, yes, organization? yes I, I just want to cover three points 
other than the food box, everything. My first point is with the benefits claims, everything else, we have an excellent volunteer service officer named Ms. Denise Lincoln. She's 98.9, you know what I'm saying, to complete your packet and for you to receive 100% disability. You know, now my second point is the triple nickel for Veterans Week. We have a historic African American cemetery is in desperate need of cleanup. We coordinate with the mayor and my secretary have the information. Her name is Trooper Willie Bolton. And I will send that information to you. We will be partnership with Georgia State University, the young generation, everything else. I know we understand we're taking care of the veterans and older veterans, but we need the older veterans to be replaced by the younger generation. Right. So if yeah. you know any, any juvenile or anyone who need or family need assistance correcting that individual before they go too far out and commit violent crimes, everything else, we can take those personnel and team them with the Phoenix Georgia families and teach them how to work, how to prepare, how to load, unload, and also our variable leadership skills and attributes. You know, because there's too many young people just hanging around, walking the street, playing games, and it's our fault leaders because we are the leaders of the community right so i would like to uh, uh get with all the coalition um elements and everything else and let's touch out and reach the younger uh, kids generation for that that's all i have mr herman that's that sound great send me just send me an email with the, a little bit of information and we'll i take that as as, as an initiative and and what I propose to you is that we we put together a Zoom call to put together a plan. And okay. I have one comment. That everyone has this little instrument, right? It's mm -hmm. a little social iPad, whatever you want to call it. Well, Herman knows I put everything on this iPad, this 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 deal. My DD Form 214 and all pertinent information is on my phone. It's in my photos section. So wherever I go and somebody says, I need a copy of DD Form 214 or whatever, oh, where's your printer? I don't have to go back and look for it. So what I'm saying to you, advocate the use. And I learned this going to the blind rehab school. This tool, if used properly, it's just like your computer on your desktop. If you utilize it and save things and put them in certain folders that you can find them when you need it. Your DD Form 214, your official military photo if you need it, some, whatever you need. And one thing that we've advocated is that uh, we had a young lady who's a retired command sergeant major on our show of putting together, I guess you could say your last rights documents. So everything is compiled into one. So your family doesn't have to go scurrying around to look for them. And you can put this right on your phone and have it any time. I know my wife has a folder here, but that same folder is on my phone. So if I'm out somewhere, I'm in a car accident or whatever, God forbid, and somebody says, is he a veteran? Yes. My ID card, a photo of my ID card is on there. My DD Form 214 is on here. All of those items. So that's just a thought to think about it and share it because Herman said something very good at the beginning. Communications. This is a communicative tool. Utilize it. Well, I just, just, just to add to that is, is, is to get, uh, let me see how I want to say this so I don't upset people is to get senior <laughs> veterans to to deal with technology. That's that has to be part of the program too. Right. I agree. I agree. A lot of them are afraid of it, don't understand it. But you know, like I said, knuckleheads. We got to educate them. We, I'm sorry not to interrupt you. I'm going on um 2019 Vet Week, right after we started Vet Week, Clinton County started Vet Connect. They came 
um, like a month or two after vet week. And it was a continuation of us all still working together. And um, one of their services was teaching veterans to get comfortable with the electronics. Um, they offered to um, take a headshot photo, a professional photo they had from, you know, from the um, waist up. Um, they also taught them how to go on LinkedIn, LinkedIn and create a profile for, you know, your business or, you know, if you were looking for a job or just wanted to put yourself out there. So um, I think the organization, I know her name is Erica. Her, her, the name of her organization is Camouflage Me Not. And um, I believe she um, she's that she's, she's one of the millennials, I want to say, that's, you know, one of those those new veterans that's out and hungry and just like, look, don't, I'm not old, you know, I'm, I'm not, right, that's right. but I ain't old, you know, I am a veteran still. So, um, but she's, I would say that organization as far as, uh, you know, probably getting, connecting with and asking her to, you know, bring that to the forefront would be, would be a great idea. I think um, we could make a lot more traction if, if veterans were a little bit more, uh, electrical, you know, on the electronics, because we could really cover a lot, a lot of more information. But I think you, everything that you all have said so far has just been like right, right, on, the nail on the head for me. Because it's like, how do you get that information out if, if they're not, you know, uh, if we're still having to go door to door? How can we bring them closer, you know, and and cover more people than just you know a, a handful of meetings that we do you know, uh, in, in a physical space. So- Mr. Herman, I, Mr. Herman, Senior Vice Gray. Yes, sir. And, and we could come together, uh, like in the young days, in my young days, you know, <laughs> my baby days, you know, come up with a kindergarten veteran head step, start 101, you know what I'm saying? Because I know that veterans are out there who just sitting at home, watching TV and letting the days go along and everything else. There's younger veterans out there and millenniums and everything else could teach them the basic fundamentals of the community operation to assist them. I agree. Uh, I, I agree. So before we wrap this up, uh, let's commit to two items. The first one that we discussed regarding the getting young people involved in the food and family situation that in and, and this one is the second one, action item is uh, uh, 101, whatever mm -hmm. we want to name it. But those are two items from the day's uh, program that uh, I I will put it on my agenda and I ask you guys, that everybody that's participated, let's put it around an action item of things to do and, and move on it. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, hey, boom. Yep. I agree with that. I agree with that 100. So you know, it's it's been fun for me to meet all of you. I haven't met. I met the, uh, Wayne, I think, on the last call, and uh, Miss Jackson. It's good to meet you, and Vice Senior Vice Gray. Uh, good to meet you also. I mean, it's uh, you know, we we can't do anything without saying a, a big shout out to our president, and CEO, and Madam Kahuna. All of that, Penny Rogers. Because, <laughs> you know, this this whole show is is the mustard seed of hers. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the mustard seed of, of five years ago. And uh, uh, working with my good friend and my fraternity brother Herman, it's just it's been a joy. And uh, each time that we come on, we're enlightened by not only good looking people, but smart people. <laughs> hey, boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're, we're some smart people. Yes, <laughs> we've endured. You know. So, so uh, okay, yeah. Anthony and uh, <laughs> Wayne, I, you, I think you had one other item before we wrap this up. Are you speaking in respect to the Zoom call? Yes. Okay, I just posted that in the uh, chat room. And that is for uh, those who would like to join us. 
on uh, that Zoom call where the uh, psychologists will be available to uh, basically enlighten us and help us potentially with some issues that might help facilitate us getting our benefits uh, for PTSD and things of that nature. Some uh, who are dealing with sexual traumas who have not basically been bold enough, strong enough, and willing enough to voice it, she would help you to basically matriculate through that process. Back in your hand, sir. Okay. Mr. Herman, I got one quick note. Okay. You know, uh, I just received a post the other night uh, stating that there are some people out there who's in disagreement with the election and everything else, and they possibly if you're alone and you're a black member, a male woman, everything else, they're gonna to try to do body harm initiations, uh, hanging you in a tree. You know, I take every one in series. So I would like everyone to be safe and take this threat as serious as possible. We don't know. Thank you. Thank you for that information. It, it really is, uh, uh, ask my family and everyone, to, to follow those things, uh, be smart and be safe. Mr. Herman, and on that note, thank you, Vice, Senior Vice. Uh, one of our VPs yesterday, as a matter of fact, told me of an experience he had over in Riverdale where a group of people came by an occasion of race and called him the N-word multiple times. You know, so it is real. Uh, unfortunately, some people are there. So back in you all, Sam. Well, just want to make an announcement. Within a, a, another few weeks, uh, I'm going to be going back in for another uh, uh, eye surgery. It's okay. It's number seven, maybe number eight. But I'm going to be starting a podcast geared mainly towards visually impaired issues uh, for the nonprofit. It's going to be an information base. I'm working now with the VA. I'm working with my physician. And the, the key factor is to put information out there because there's so many veterans now that are finally getting themselves checked. And each time I go to the VA, that, that, that room just gets larger and larger and larger. So it's something that has been on my heart for the last six months. And I'm gonna step out there now and in addition to working with uh, Veterans Today Talk Radio, do a podcast geared mainly towards veteran with uh, visual issues. So. I'll get that information out to you. And I just want to say thank you very much. And this, this whole show will be uploaded on YouTube and the WCG network. So you know, tell your friends all about it. And it's great seeing you. And just, just before we run out of time, uh, for the rest of this year, it, and we are partnering together, VHV, uh, Triple Nickel, VFW, and uh, Avis. Uh, we are having a few food uh, food boxes giveaway and we we're gonna be doing them at least uh, once a week and maybe twice a week uh, uh, the the rest of this year because we have committed to that and also uh, on the no November 29th we have the event uh, down on 400 north side again and that we want to make sure and communicate <laughs> communicate that to the community, and we need uh, the community to show up. But we also need volunteers to help us make that happen. So those are the key events that we want to highlight, and we want to <coughs> communicate. We want to public publicize them. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and uh, call your friends, call your neighbors. Uh, I think we just ran out of time. <laughs> so, uh, thank you everybody for coming. This has been a great Veterans Day and everyone be safe, be careful, be healthy and have a good weekend. Thank, thank you all. Are you too, Miss Jace? Thank you. You will. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>